Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineerandtrainingexam.com. And in this video, we will discuss benefit cost analysis. In this video, we will define the topic of benefit cost analysis, walk through the general workflow of solving such problems, and jump into working an example of something we may see on the exam. The topic of benefit cost analysis falls under the main category of engineering economics. Equations, symbols, tables, and information on the various topics covered in engineering economics can be referenced on pages 114 through 120 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, 8th edition, 2nd revision. To determine the economic acceptability of a project, or investment for that matter, a benefit cost analysis considers the total cash flow stream of benefits and costs over the duration of the projects. In these problems, we will typically be given a desired minimum rate of return, or MAR, as the guiding interest rate to base our analysis on. A short explanation of the benefit cost ratio can be found on page 115 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook. So let's run through the general workflow. When analyzing alternatives, the goal of a benefit cost analysis is to determine which alternative is most beneficial for the ent entity funding it. A typical problem will illustrate two project scenarios that take place over the same duration in time. We will compute the benefit cost ratio on the cash flow representing the differences of these two alternatives. This difference in cash flow can be established by subtracting the lower initial cost alternative cash flows from the higher initial cost cash flows. To determine the benefit cost ratio, the following formula is used B over C, which is benefit cost is equal to the present worth of benefits divided by the present worth of costs, which is also equal to the equivalent uniform annual benefits divided by the equivalent uniform annual costs. Once complete, if the benefit cost ratio is greater than or equal to one, then we'll be, we will deem the higher cost alternative as acceptable. If the benefit cost ratio is less than one, then we will de deem the lower cost alternative as acceptable. So let's run through an example here. A company is shown two investment alternatives to choose from. Each alternative has the following cash flows. In this table, our first column is year. Our second column is alternative A, and our third column is the cash flow for alternative B. So filling out this table, we got years 0, 1, 2, 3, and then we have the cash flows for alternative A as negative 100,000, which is the initial cost. Year 1, 2, and 3 are all 25,000. And then alternative B, has an initial cost of 146,000 and benefit year 123 as $42,000. Now, if the minimum acceptable rate of return is 4%, which alternative should be chosen using the benefit cost analysis? So let's run through the solution. The goal is to determine which alternative is most beneficial for the firm by compu computing the benefit cost ratio on the cash flow representing the difference in the alternatives. This difference in cash flow can be established by subtracting the lower initial cost alternative cash flows from the higher initial cost cash flows. This looks like this. Let's add another column and our, our higher cost is alternative B, so it'd be B minus A. 
And all we need to do is fill in the blanks for the cash flow differences. So uh, the initial cash flow difference is $46,000. And then the benefits uh, in year one, two, and three, the difference is $17,000. Now, when analyzing the benefit cost ratio using the cash flow represented by the difference between the two alternatives, the following selection criteria is used. If the benefit cost ratio is greater than or equal to 1, then we will deem the higher cost alternative as acceptable. If the benefit cost ratio is less than 1, then we will deem the lower cost alternative as acceptable. A short explanation of the benefit cost ratio again can be referenced on page 115 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook. We can compute the benefit cost ratio on the increment of investment represented by the difference between the alternatives using the following analysis. B over C is equal to present worth of benefits divided by the present worth cost is equal to the equivalent uniform annual benefits divided by the equivalent uniform annual costs. In this problem, we are given a present worth of cost of $46,000 and a uniform annual benefits of $17,000. And also, our MAR is 4%. Our present worth of benefits is equal to $17,000 divided by P over A. 4% 3. So we're converting the annual benefits into a present worth of benefit. Referencing the compound interest table for 4% because that's our MAR on page 118 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, we reference N equals 3, which is our period, and work our way horizontally and find that P over A 4% 3 is equal to 2.7751. So our present worth of benefits is 17,000 times 2.7751, which is equal to 47,178. Plugging in the values to determine the benefit cost ratio we get, B over C is equal to 47,177 divided by 46,000, and our benefit cost ratio is 1.03. So the benefit cost ratio is 1.03, which is greater than 1. So alternative B, which is the higher cost alternative, is acceptable. There are a few common ways that we could fall off track on a problem like this. The first is by forgetting the basic selection criterion we are working with when dealing with alternatives. If the benefit cost ratio is greater than or equal to 1, then we will deem the higher cost alternative as acceptable. If the benefit cost ratio is less than 1, then we will deem the lower cost alternative as acceptable. We could also very easily flip the variables that represent the benefit cost ratio. It is important to remember that the ratio is called benefit cost, so we divide the benefits by the costs not the other way around. Well, that's it for this video. Do you know anybody that would benefit from this lesson? If so, let's try to reach out and help others by sharing this video with them. Also, take a second to like this video and leave a comment and tell me how it will help you move forward in your goal of becoming a professional engineer. And finally, type in engineerintrainingexam.com into your URL bar and visit the site to download for free the transcript to this video along with the example problem and solution we worked. While you are there, you can also sign up for the free EIT Academy Bootcamp, 137 pages and over 50 practice problems and solutions to get you on track to passing this exam.